I've never been able to recreate my experience the first time I went to the Keck Observatory. Mm. Um, but it was, we just caught lightning in a bottle. And I remember when we were driving up there, we, we had been staying on, on the Big Island. And we, we stayed on the Big Island specifically because I wanted to go to the observatory. I was like, I, t I just want to see it. I keep hearing that it's insane. And as we were driving up the mountain, it was cloudy. I was like, oh, this sucks. We got a cloudy day. God. Oh, well. You know, we'll go up there anyway, and we'll see what it's like and look at their telescopes and all that jazz. But then you drove through the clouds. So the, it was so high up there that you passed through the clouds, right. and then it was just crystal clear. And I swear, it changed my life. Like, just looking at it that way, I, I don't think – I know – everyone knows that we're in space. That's but right. you don't see it that way all the time because I just don't think it's possible unless you live in some very rural area. Well, you mentioned catch, this. You said, like, yeah. it's a tragedy that we suffer from light pollution. Yeah. So much so, you said, that we don't even know what we don't see. Yeah, we don't. We have no understanding of what's above us and that the ancients used to see every single day. Absolutely. That's what they saw every night. So much so that this is a beautiful picture that Jamie's showing. This is the Alma. This is what stands for Atacama, which is the desert that we're in. It's the driest desert on Earth. It's the highest desert on Earth because it's, you know, 5,000 meters, 17,000 feet in the Andes Mountains. Um, and this picture is showing these, this band that's arcing overhead. That's the Milky Way galaxy. I'm a professional astronomer, Joe. When I go down there, I can't recognize the constellations that I know and I've known since I was 12 years old. Because there's no contrast, like every star just is like blowing you away, mm. and it's just magnified so much by the clarity and the distance and the remove from light pollution. It is a toxic, you know. It's, it is preventing our children from really yeah. understanding what the ancients knew. I wonder if we're going to get to a point with technology that we figure out how to use some sort of diffuse lighting everywhere, where we minimize light pollution, at least minimize it to the point where you do see stars. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think it really is a bad thing for us. I think it's akin to people not getting sunlight in the winter. Mm -hmm. they, they kind of – they don't do well because they don't get vitamin D. Yeah. I think there's something psychological. Like it's a, there's a medicine to the awe-inspiring cosmos. It's so funny you said that. I haven't met Andrew Huberman. He used to be a professor at UC San Diego where I am He's now. He's the best. Love we that have, guy. I, yeah, he's just, You'd he's, love him. He's such an, an amazing contributor. His whole shtick is, is get out in the morning, mm -hmm. see the morning sunlight. What I want to talk to him about, because he's an expert in the eye and the physiology of the eye as well as all the other stuff that he does on his, on his, uh, for his laboratory, right? But I want to ask him about astronomical things. Like we see those, those, that night sky. What will it mean to our physiology and to our psychology to not to have that robbed from a whole we, – we we're doing an experiment. Yes. Nobody knows what will happen, as right. you just said. What will happen? It'll be like – will it be like – Sitting is the new smoking or right. know, sitting is the new crack or I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's the point. What will it mean? There's something deeply into the human mind. Like, the reasons the constellations have names, right, is because there was no Netflix, right? There was no Netflix 2,000 years ago. So people identified things and they could navigate. I can sort of navigate by star. I know the constellation is incredibly, which doesn't sound so big a deal as an astronomer. You're like, but most astronomers don't really care. They don't, they don't know the constellations. Like, really? One of the jokes is like, don't ask me what constellation that is. I'm an astronomer. You know? I, I always give them crap. I'm always like, yeah, if you were a geography professor, I'd say like, where's Mexico? He's like, don't ask me. You know, it's mm. like kind of ridiculous. But, um, but not having that experience and just like you and I remember what it was like to have have it at some level, or we can go and travel to. Yeah. People can't in L.A. But they can do something, which is which is quite phenomenal, with the same telescope that you can get an actual version of this. You can connect it to your smartphone. You can have a tripod. It's fifty dollars. I made a video once. I said this is the best Christmas gift you could possibly get a kid, because with it you can see the same craters on the moon that Galileo saw. Light pollution does not obscure the you know the planets. Light pollution does not make impossible. I'm not advocating for light pollution, but I'm just saying right here in the middle of Austin or in the middle of San Diego, I can see the exact same things that caused Galileo to realize that the sun is the center of the solar system. 